Welcome back to Bargaining and More. In the last lecture, we solved for the corner solution of the game with uncertainty over costs. This lecture, we're going to conduct a comparative static on that solution and find out what happens when we increase B's valuation of the prize. You'll recall that we've already done this sort of process with the interior solution before, and we found something counterintuitive. When we increased VB, again, B's valuation, within the interior solution, we decreased the circumstances where war occurs. Within the corner solution here, however, we're going to see the opposite. We're going to see the intuitive relationship where increasing VB increases the circumstances where we see war happening. To get to that, let's recap what we learned last time. We found out that we could write A's optimal demand as a function of Q, its prior belief that B has high costs. Namely, there is a cut point with the value CA over VA plus CB over VB divided by 1 minus P plus CA over VA. If A's prior belief was above that cut point, it would make a risky demand. Only the high cost type would accept and the low cost type would reject. We would therefore have war with probability one minus Q. If A's belief was below that cut point, it would make a safe demand instead. In this case, both types would accept and the probability of war would be zero. The central question we are asking in this lecture is what happens when we increase this value, VB. If we have the intuitive relationship, if B having a larger value of the prize makes B more belligerent, and thus we get more war, our expectation would be that this cut point would shift to the left. That would mean A makes the risky demand under a greater set of circumstances than before. Beyond that intuition, there's also a more theoretical reason why we would expect that, if we think back to the logic of peace premiums. Let's compare what A has to give to the low-cost type of B to what it must give the high-cost type of B to induce a peaceful outcome. Well, the low-cost type has a war payoff of 1 minus P minus CB over VB. That's how much A must pay off the low-cost type to get the low-cost type to accept. The peace premium is comparing this to the amount that A must pay the high-cost type. But remember, we're in the corner solution. The high-cost type has a negative value for war. So A doesn't have to pay it anything at all. This is the size of the peace premium. And if we think about what happens when we increase VB, well, we are increasing the denominator of the fraction. You think about what happens as the denominator of a fraction goes to infinity, the value of the fraction goes to zero. So what that would mean is that this quantity here is getting smaller, which means we're subtracting out a smaller and smaller quantity, which means the size of the piece premium is going up and up and up. Thus, another reason we might expect the risky demand to be made under a greater set of circumstances is because of that larger piece premium. So let's go ahead and show that. Let's show that this cut point here will become smaller as we make VB larger. So let's just copy that down here. We have CA over VA plus CB over VB plus epsilon, all divided by 1 minus P plus CA over VA. And our expectation is that that's going to be smaller. It's going to be to the left of the original cut point. CA over VA plus CB over VB. No epsilon there because we haven't changed it. This is the original amount. All over 1 minus P plus CA over VA. Now all we need to do is manipulate this inequality and demonstrate that it's true. We can begin by multiplying off both of the denominators. It's the exact same value on both sides. And moreover, we don't have to worry about flipping the inequality because both of those things are positive. 1 minus p has to be at least 0, if not larger. And of course, ca over va, those are positive values as well. So if we do that, then we're just looking at what's up top. 
So we have CA over VA plus CB over VB plus epsilon less than CA over VA plus CB over VB. Well, now it's clear that we have the CA and VA on both sides, so we can get rid of those, which leaves us with just CB over VB plus epsilon less than CB over VB. Well, we have CBs on both of the numerators, so we can get rid of those. We don't have to worry about flipping anything again because CB is a positive value. Now we're just left with some simple fractions. We can still get rid of those fractions by multiplying off the denominators and shifting them over to the opposite side's numerator. So if we do that, we get VB less than VB plus epsilon. What's more, we don't have to worry about flipping the inequality because both VB and epsilon are positive values. And you can see that we're going to end up concluding that epsilon is greater than zero, which is true. Excellent, this worked out. So what we have just shown is that as we increase VB, this quality right there, if we increase VB, we are shifting the cut point to the left, and so we are increasing the circumstances where A is making the risky demand. Again, this is the intuitive relationship because we're making B more resolved and more belligerent, and we're seeing fighting occurring under more circumstances than before. To finish this off, let's just talk about what this relationship looks like a little bit more broadly, both in the corner and in the interior solution. And we can do that by drawing an equilibrium plot, just like what we had done when we were looking at uncertainty over value and taking comparative static on costs. So here on our x-axis, we're going to have a change in the valuation. And on our y-axis, we're going to have q, again, that prior belief that A thinks that B has high costs. Well, broadly speaking, whenever Q is small, A is leaning toward the safe demand, and whenever Q is large, it's going to lean toward the risky demand. So we know, broadly speaking, there's going to be some parameter range up top where A is making the risky demand and some parameter space down bottom where A is making the safe demand. What's going on? How is that happening? Where is the dividing line? Well, there's three different possibilities. The one that we haven't covered is another type of corner solution where VB is so small that both parties have a negative value for war. Both types, whether B has high or low costs, has a negative value for war. Under those circumstances, A can make any demand whatsoever and not fight a war because B is always going to accept. So A gets to capture the entire good and there's zero risk of war regardless of what its prior belief is. So under that circumstance, we just have the straight line here where there's always a safe demand being made, we never have war. When we increase VB enough, we eventually transition to the corner solution that we just covered, where as we increase VB further, we're seeing more and more circumstances where A is making a risky demand. So that looks something like this. But then when we go further and further out, when VB keeps getting larger and larger and larger, eventually what's going to happen is the counterintuitive relationship that we covered at the start of all of this, where increasing B's valuation actually makes A take a safer approach. And so that looks like this over here. So again, what this equilibrium plot is doing for us is it's saying, give me a value of VB, give me a value of Q, I show you whether A is going to make a safe or risky demand. And we see a non-monotonic relationship there, where originally it's making very safe demands. As we increase VB, A starts incurring more risk, and as we go further and further out, A then starts getting safer and safer once again. All right, that wraps up this lecture on what happens when we increase the valuation when we have uncertainty over costs. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope to see you next time. Take care.